Good evening and welcome to the South African of the Year Daily Show here on ANN7 Channel 405. The show where we go into the lives of extraordinary and incredible South Africans doing inspiring things across the country through the lens this year of reflection and progression. My name is Maps Maponyani. Today we have a guest who is one that has been in the entertainment industry for a while now and he has left an indelible mark with his name in the industry and everyone knows him who has seen him do anything. When you, when you come across him, he leaves this lasting impression which makes you just not want to forget the kind of man that he, that he is. He's flamboyant, he's eccentric and he is boisterous in his bountiful personality. You've seen him on TV, you've heard him on radio, he's a choreographer, he's a dancer, He's a singer, he's a radio presenter, he's a TV presenter. Of course, you know exactly who I'm talking about. So, Mizi Som Gaga Mshongo, thank you so much for joining us in studio. Thank you for having me. I've listened to you talking, and there's two words that are, um, are new. And I'm the master of dictionary, <laughs> but the difference between me and you is that you speak the right words, I speak my own words. <laughs> you said indelible and boisterous. What's that? So, indelible is just uh, something that's just so intricately in, in something that you can't you can't forget it it's just that it can't be ignored indelible and then boisterous is something that's loud and out there and um, just you oh, know okay. that has that vibrato that leaves that impression as well nice nice yeah all right thank, <laughs> thank you for, you for joining me. us thank you thank you Max. um so Mizzy, let's let's go right to the start you've been in the industry essentially from the age of four you officially started acting at the age of six but you were on the road already traveling with with your with your, with your parents from mm -hmm. the age of four it would be silly to ask you how you you started in the industry but i would love to know where your mind was at at that early age and if you if this was always what you were going to um, yeah. end up going into with me at four i knew i knew at four and then said at four o'clock <laughs> at, at four i knew that i wanted to be in show business because when i was traveling with my parents i remember seeing stage lights um costumes choreography and i, I was like i want to play the, it, it it looked like a play field for adults and um, when the time came at age six they were looking for a, a child who was gonna play a very small role and they were about to audition kids and then I screamed no I wanna do it I wanna do it I wanna do it because they were talking in front of me not even thinking that because I've never even once gave my parents an idea that mm -hmm. I would want it's something that I knew internally and that's why I used to cry when they went on tour because I wanted to travel with them and they took me with mm. so when I took the role it was just one line but it was one line that I looked forward to and I knew that was the beginning of my l entire life yeah even when I was 12 when my father asked me what do you want to be I never said I wanted to do to be a doctor or a lawyer I said I wanted to be Michael Jackson um, my mother would ask me, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I see myself as Whitney Houston or Brenda Farsi yeah. um, or famous. So it, it, it was obvious and clear. And my parents never for once said no. Wow. Mm. And I mean, even at the point in grade nine when they supported you in your decision to, to leave school, no, they didn't. They didn't support no, you. No. So they did what's not the story know. behind that? They, they didn't, didn't know. Did you just slip, yes. slip out of that system? They didn't know. They left with the cast of Sarafina. They yes. went overseas, uh, which was going to be a two-year trip. So then there were no cell phones, no emails, mm. just tele in Telegram <laughs> and, and, and landline. Yeah. So when they, immediately when they left, I stopped going to school. Mm. And I was 13 then. Um, I was actually 12. And um, when they would call to say, how school? I'm like, great, fabulous. And I would even leave home wearing my school uniform with a bag yeah. full of dance clothes. And then as I get into the train to town, I would change in the, in the toilet and then into my dance gear. And then at the dance studio or wherever I was rehearsing, mm. they would ask, go oh, about school. I said, no, no, my parents know. They understand. They would not call them. They're in New York. Wow. You know? So for the whole year, they didn't know. And I would lie about my results, saying, I, I did well. You can't email a report. Yeah, yeah, so of course. 
so like they, they were fine with it until I auditioned for the second production of Sarafina that was gonna travel Europe. And then Bongeni asked me, do your parents know? I said, yes, they do. Never bothered. Still, still. Oh, makes. Until they saw the list of the cast members that were, or we were starting in New York to, to relieve their cast because they were there for two years by then. So when my father saw the list, we were already at the airport and they were already coming back. So we were like, bye. And you miss each other and they Yeah, but out. funny enough, they never, they were never hard. They were like, he could have told. I said, no, I was scared because I was supposed to join the first class of Serafina. My dad said, mm. no, finish school first. Um, but they were like, are you happy? Are you enjoying it? Sharp. Let's keep it moving. Let's take a look at what a day in his life is like and what he typically gets up to. My journey, damn, it's been, it's been a roller coaster, but it's something that I would not change a single thing. Um, everything great that has happened from the beginning and everything terrible that has happened made me to be the person that I am today. So I would never change anything. It has been an amazing. If, if, if I had to die now and they ask me, how was it? I would say flipping amazing. You know, sometimes they say it's how you were raised that keeps you grounded, but also sometimes it's the choices that you make as an individual because you could be raised properly and, and taught values and stuff or to be a, a nice person and a respectful person and you change just because maybe of fame and the money. I, I am genuinely and generally, and I know that I don't need to be told I'm a nice person. So that keeps me grounded to the fact that I see everyone as they're the same as I am. The only difference is that my name is more popular maybe than them, but we are we're all the same. And I always view myself as you are as good as your last gig, as good as your last paycheck, and you are two seconds, like if I see a beggar maybe at, at the traffic lights, I always, I'm always reminded that you are two seconds away from being in this position, and him is also two seconds away from being in my position. If I had to describe myself, I would say colorful, energetic, bit of impatient. I don't like slow people. But if I choose one word again, I'll say happy. <laughs> Typical day for me, I wake up at five in the morning, I get ready for my radio show to be traffic. And then if I can squeeze gym, I can before the show, but mostly I'll go after the show. My radio show starts at 8, finishes at 10, and then I go to gym. And then after gym, I squeeze everything else, whether it's a voiceover, whether it's a TV commercial, whether it's going to the airport and flying to a different city or a different country. Uh, but my day ends relatively around. 11 p.m., get home at 12, we sleep at about 1, and then wake up again four hours later. We are
you literally have no time to yourself now. You have to rush from the one thing to the other. Anyone who follows you on social media just sees how busy you are, but also how, how you maintain this energy and passion with everything that you're doing. Um, getting to this point from Sarafina, um, you know, you, you were doing that when you were 14. What was the journey from that point moving towards staying within the industry, doing the projects you want to do, keeping your name out there and reinventing Somiz and Flong? I think one thing that South Africa and the world doesn't know about Mbongi Ningema, that's the man I would give credit to. Mm. He's the boot camp of show business. Um, I don't know, I, I think naturally I'm a disciplined person, but coming from or having been trained by Mbongi, Mbongi ran a boot camp, a show business boot camp. He, he taught us how to sing, dance and act at the same time because he was producing a musical. But more than anything, discipline. He was a soldier, he was a commander, he was very strict and he was very, he was a little bit of Hitlerish, but it, it's just tough love. I never miss a flight, um, I never miss a flight unless I, I miss it once and I, because I was sleeping at the boarding gate, I passed out because I was too tired yeah. flying back and forth. Um, I never I've never taken drugs or anything to enhance my personality or performance. Um, I respect the stage. I think the stage for me or anything that I do is like my church because that's the job that makes me skip church because I would like to go to church. But that's how I praise God because of the talent that I was given by Him. What has been the one thing that has made you um, always want to uh, be different and, and stand out? Where did that come from? I mean, you've got this wonderful alter ego, Madam Gigi, mm. in a very conservative South Africa. Mm. You're proudly and openly gay, something you're mm. widely respected for. Mm. You, you own that, and that is essentially what makes you you. But w w where did that come from to always stand out and be different? I think also, again, going back to Mbongeni, looking at Mbongeni, who, who did something that has never been done before by producing a musical that was about apartheid, during apartheid, and against apartheid and then taking it to the world, taking it to Broadway, where Broadway is about cats, uh, La Miserable, mm -hmm. um, greatest musical, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals, um, and, and he has this black, young, 32-year-old South African who broke barriers. Mbogan is the origi originator of the word slay, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and And... He was unapologetic about it, and I think I took that, that I'm not going to apologize for anything that I am uh, or, or the person that I am, because this is all that I have. Uh, for instance, I started as an actor, and the minute I became comfortable and open with my sexuality, I didn't get roles. Fortunately, God made me, if I was an animal, I would be a chameleon mm. um, in different colors and unpredictable. Uh, I would sit on red and blend in with red, but immediately step out and still carry on with that red before I change into something else. So Speaking to your versatility and exactly. So you, I am never a one trick pony. I am never predictable. Um, and I do me. Mm. And me is me. We'll be back more with Somizi after this. I know what it feels like to be disappointed by somebody you idolize. Um, especially when you meet them physically, they're like, eh. Hey. Um, and and the saying that goes umuntu umuntu mabantu, mm. it's basically that yeah. you are nothing without people. Mm. Welcome back to the studio. We're still in studio with the eccentric Somizin Tlongo. Uh, you know him for those words. Ooh, Shem. Mm. That experience and that journey of going into 
that phase of life. Right now, you say you're living that dream um, with, your, with your reality show, living the dream with Somiz and Shlongo. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, what made you start that reality show? I know how excited you were about it. And <laughs> to finally let everyone come into your world and see what you're all about, as opposed to you know, what people write about you mm -hmm. and the little snippets of, of us seeing your incredible work uh, during the World Cup, during the Confederations Cup, um, and many other big uh, tournaments or any other big dance competitions or gigs that you've ever taken care of. You're well known for your incredible work, but now actually peop allowing people in for your daily life. What was, um, what was that like? Well, I did not want to do a reality show. Sorry. I, I hated the idea because I feel like, let me give you what I want to give to you. Instagram is enough, 15 seconds video if it's a video. <laughs> uh, picture, it's fine. Um, I've always been overly protective with my personal space because I feel like I'm in the public eye all the time. So can't I have just this one part of my life private? And then the channel asked me about four years ago, and then we tried it, but it did not happen. It was canceled um, because of an incident that happened during the shoot where I physically... Um, according to a physical fight with someone. And I'm like, why are they canceling? Which part of reality did they miss? Because mm. me getting angry. Okay, this is what happened. This guy <laughs> lied about, we went to the papers. I met a fan yeah. at a club, took a picture. And then this fan started saying, I'm stalking him. I'm like, ah, oh, this guy. So he posted on Twitter and said, my stalker. This is a stalker, how? With pictures of you. We were together. He asked for a picture at a club. And so he said that you were the stalker. Then he posted and then he said, I'm stalking him. I'm oh. like, okay. Then it went to the papers headlines. So he's stalking this guy. And he even ran with it. Yes, he's stalking me. I'm not gay. He wants to. And we met at a gay club. Yeah. I'm not gay. <laughs> la, 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 la. Then I'm shooting my reality in Melville. I bump into him. Same club. I'm like, hey, come here. <laughs> you, you have an opportunity. There are the cameras. We are shooting. Please say your side of the story. <laughs> Do I know you? No. H have we met before that picture? No. Yeah. Um, have I stalked you? No. So why? I said, I get over yourself. F you. Wow. Yo, I went blue, green, and yellow. A man who's certainly been through life's test and has come through the other side for the better. And you can see that in all the work that he has put out there. He's the fourth judge of the Idols team. He came on in season 11 and managed to get ratings up in a big way, increased by 29%, including voting up to 78 million votes from 29.3 million votes. That's just the kind of effect that Somizim Shlongo has when he touches something. And everything that he's touching right now is turning to gold. He's also on, an, on a new morning show slot in Metro FM, uh, which is called Who, Whose Show Is It Anyway? And that's with Kanye Mbao and Ndombi and this is what his colleague Kanye Mbao had to say about working with him. My relationship with Somizi goes back since I think 12 years ago when I got into the industry as the first dupsy, well the second dupsy on Mobango. Um, he was also a character so we met on set. Um, it's always been a real brother-sisterly type of relationship. I wouldn't say that we're friends, but we're there for each other when we need each other most. There's nothing I like about him. Um, so Mizi goes into your skin and he becomes the 11th finger. And whether you like it or not, it's in your life and you end up um, appreciating it. Um, and I know people are gonna go, oh my gosh, she doesn't like him. No, what I'm trying to say is it grows beyond like, it grows beyond understanding. He becomes a part of you. That's how he is. Whichever situation he gets into, he gels in and it actually becomes the situation himself. So um, I could say that he is a part of me. If I don't like him, then I don't like myself. You're, you know, it, it was quarter to four in the morning and I had just watched his first episode of Idols. It was something that he's been planning for months. He had to keep it quiet for about six months before the announcement was made. So you can imagine how difficult it was. And here he is on TV coming out of that stage as an idol judge throughout everything that he's been through. Um, I couldn't sleep, so I gave him a call to find he was away. We both cried on that phone for so long because we couldn't believe how our lives were changing, especially for the controversy and everything around us and how he's come 360. And that people and brands like Mnet 
are taking him seriously and giving him such a platform was such a great thing. And I, I love that he's real. He's not afraid to say, Kanye, I'm failing, Kanye, I'm weak, Kanye, I'm scared, Kanye, I'm excited, Kanye, I can't wait, Kanye, I'm angry. And that's what I love about him. So me, Zimshong or Gaga, what do they call you? Everything, right? My words of encouragement is never forget. Never forget, you know, what the struggle is and the hunger. You've come this way. Always be grounded. Keep your feet and your toes in the sand. And that's how you'll know that you're still alive. You're amazing. Some beautiful words there from your colleague Kanye. She says she doesn't like you because she doesn't have a choice. It's not about liking you. It's so much deeper than that. You, sh you should ask anyone at Metro when I walk in, even the security guards, they like say, the other one say, ah, for a change, you walked in without making noise. <laughs> Today, he says, oh, because I, I, I was late and I think I had food in my mouth. So he says, <laughs> Oh, for a change, you walked in without making noise, and I swallowed my food, and I'm like, yeah, bo, <laughs> hi, and I give them a high five, and I walk into the studio, and walk into, and sometimes I bring them like, um, uh, frappes, uh, smoothies, yeah, at the previous show and my show, and I meet Glenn and Unati, and it's like, blah 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 blah, it's constant because. I, it does, shouldn't feel like work. Oh, I have to go there and pump into something. Yeah. So there isn't that moment for me. And I, if there is, I delete it and I keep it moving. And I guess that's why it, it makes an impact. Because when I, I'm not at work, they're like, yo, it was so weird, you know? And that's the, the kind of impact that I believe each and every one of us has the ability uh, to, to make. Uh, but we choose. We have a choice. Yeah. Well, you're going to have a few choices right now. It's mm. the South African of the Year Awards, of course, and we want to play a bit of fun and games. You know you love, I love, it. Some, I love some, it. some funny games. I know, I know you also love, uh, you're, you're very academic-oriented as well. You know, from, from the dictionary, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that there, there must be some, um, okay, some, some, some general knowledge there. <laughs> Let's go. This is a trivia test on how well you know South Africa. Okay. Question number one, what is South Africa's biggest export? <laughs> Tea. I'm gold. Gonna, there we go. Gold. Yeah. You knew that. All right. Question number two. Name the South African that hosts the Daily Show in America. Oh. Is it Gumbi? Is it Manuel? Oh. Is it Trevor Gumbi? Is it Trevor, <laughs> Trevor Manuel? Is it... Oh. <laughs> It's Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah, that's the one. Question number three. Um, South Africa is a proud rugby playing nation, which mm -hmm. is the only South African Super 14 rugby team to ever win a Super 14 title. In fact, they've won it twice. And I'm asking you this because uh, you've told me before how much uh, you enjoy uh, ball playing sports. Soccer, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh -uh, you Asking a gay man in rugby. But, like, but okay, I'll, I'll give you a clue. Which, which is that one rugby team from South Africa that you think would have won a Super 14 rugby title? I know two teams, Cheetahs and uh, Sharks. It's the Bulls. You, it's the Blue Bulls. You know the Bulls. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Question number four. What is the national um, flower of South Africa? Protea. Yep, as many of It's here, yeah, there's plenty of them. Yeah, there's a few of them around yes. here. And question number five, who am I? I was born on the 18th of September, 1973 in Valcom Free State. I am the founder of the Ubuntu project and I became an instant billionaire after I sold my internet company. I also became the first Is he white? South African in Is he white? He dated Kanye Dom Jesus. <laughs> ah, he owns an Uber shuttle. Well. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Four out of five, nice and easy. I feel like we wasted your time with those questions. Very, very, very nice results. Okay, well, we, we were lucky enough to chat to some of your fans. Let's just show you the kind of impact that you that you have, and um, this is what they had to say about you. Aww. That person is very outspoken, bubbly. He's natural, like he's himself. He doesn't fake his personality. He's he's unique. And he keeps on reinventing himself, you know. And I think it also helps that he was part of Idols. 
you know, that kind of like took him to the next level. And let's be honest, DSTV is abusing him on promos and everything. So that makes him relevant. So Mizi is out there. He's awesome. He's young. He's vibrant. Um, you know, a lot of people look up to him. He's just that one person that um, sees an opportunity and goes after it. So I look up to him for that. Hi, so Mizi. It's Millicent, your fan. Oh, you just make my world go around. Like, I love watching you each and every day. I can repeat your episode once and more again. Hi, Sumizi. Hi, Sumgaga. We love you and just continue being a role model for us young people. Peace. Well, obviously, you inspire your fans in a, in a very big way. What's it like to know that you have that impact on, on so many lives? It, it's such things that also keep you grounded. Um, realizing the impact because I know what it feels like to be disappointed by somebody you idolize um, especially when you meet them physically they're like eh. um, and and the saying that goes mm. it's basically that yeah. you are nothing without people and there may just be one more on the way with the personality of the award possibly coming your way your can I hold it is this the one <laughs> is this the one yeah? It could be your one. It's just the one. one. It's not the actual one, but, but it's, a, it's a replica of one of them. But with that in your hand and to that camera, your numbers are purse six, your, your word purse, P-E-R-S, and the number six. Tell the voters at home Mara, the word for you. The NN7, couldn't you say, say P1, P2? <laughs> Do you know how difficult it is to explain <laughs> to people purse? Is it a purse? Or is, and it's in a black bunch of education. Purse. Is it purse, P U R It's oh. P. E R S six two four three zero four three. I must start getting used to it so I can promote it on my radio. Four three zero four three four three zero four three P E R S number six. Please vote and then cut and then let me do my speech. Hi South Africa, thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much for voting. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it tonight, <laughs> but I can see all of you. You looking beautiful. Oh my goodness, this is such an honor and um, a privilege. I would like to thank everybody, every single person that voted. This has been the most expensive award in the history of awards because the entire South Africa voted for me and I wouldn't have it without you. Thank you. And the screen goes. <laughs> <laughs> so busy. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for inspiring so many South Africans. Thank you for being unique and uh, for for standing out in a way that uh, makes you so distinguishable to anyone else in the industry. And continue doing what you're doing. And all the best. Thank you for having me, Mavzi. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if you want to vote for the indelible and eccentric... Indelible! Uh, <laughs> so, Mizim Flogo, all you need to do is SMS, as you said, PRS Purse, P-E-R-S to 6, uh, sorry, 6 to 43043, or you can um, email PRS6 to satyvoting at nn7.com, uh, or you can go to our website, www.nn7, and follow the instructions there, and vote for him or the other nominees to get your chance to get double tickets and a VIP experience to be rubbing salt amongst people such as Somizi, even though he's just accepted his award just in case he does win it on that night and he will be too busy to be there. Um, and you can catch <laughs> us again. Thank you so much for watching and from myself, Mops Mopanyani, good night.